Okay, so I've got another mini PC here and I last reviewed in AMD. This one now is a Intel. So Intel's turn again, it's eighth gen. It's from a brand called GMK. This is the first mini PC that I've reviewed from them. In fact, any products from them. They did send this out to me, so small disclaimer, this is a mini PC that I do get to keep, but that's not going to influence my review of this. I'll give you all the full pros and cons. So it is powered by the Core i5, it's the 8259. Now this is a 28 watt processor, four cores, eight threads, maximum turbo is 3.8 gigahertz, and it does have the Iris Plus 655 graphics. So certainly improved performance over say the normal integrated graphics from Intel, which would be the UHD or the 620, UHD 620 graphics, which is not really amazing. This is a step up and quite a bit more performance as you'll see later on with my gaming demonstration that I will give you of this one. So it comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of MVME storage, and it does also have space inside for a 2.5 inch drive if you wanted to add more storage to this one here. It has wireless AC, gigabit LAN, and a Type-C port on here, and it can run two 4K displays at 60 Hertz. In the box of this mini PC, you will find our EU power cable, and this is the power supply, very small, and it does have that standard Mickey Mouse style connector plug, so very easy to source a replacement. Maximum output on this one is 65 watts, and it has the five millimeter tip that we often see on these mini PCs. So again, very easy to get a replacement power supply if needed. Now what is not included in the box is a Visa mounting bracket, which is disappointing to see. We do also have this, which is just a user guide for the mini PC. Onto the building design of this. So we have a plastic body completely with this. It looks like it could be an alloy around this, metal, but it isn't. It's plastic, definitely when you tap on that, you can tell. Two USB 3.0s right here, type C. Now this does not support video out this one. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack power on button, which feels okay, status LEDs behind this. There are normally some rubber feet on the bottom, but I have removed those. Here we have a micro SD card reader on the left side, which is good. On the right, there is nothing, and all of our ports on the back. So the two HDMIs here, these are HDMI 2.0 spec. I've tested both of them out, and you can run two displays at 4K60. That is powered, of course, by the Iris 655 integrated graphics. Another two USB 3 ports, Gigabit LAN, and this is our power in, exit vent for the fan, which is located right here on the bottom. So you can see the mounting bracket right there. This is where the supports go, so you screw that in, and you can put this on the back of a TV or a monitor. So for upgrades, let's take a look at what we can do with this one. So there are four rubber feet on the bottom. You remove those, you undo the screws, and then this lid just comes right off. So we can add another stick of RAMs. This is DDR4 spec and it's only got eight gigabytes here, so I would add another eight to get the dual channel benefit then, and that will really boost up that integrated graphics performance, the Iris graphics there that this one does have. So we cannot upgrade the wireless card. The wireless card is part of the motherboard soldered on right there, which is a shame, and it is not a AX card either. This is Wi-Fi AC, sadly, and this is the MVME drive, so you can replace that, upgrade that if you wanted to. Now to add a 2.5 inch drive, you have the cable that is strapped to the inside, taped to the inside of the top of the lid here. And all you need to do then is just screw it into the bracket, plug it in, and you have your expandable storage there, a 2.5 inch SATA 3 drive, which can be of course a spindle hard drive, huge capacity, cheaper, or a faster SSD. And a look briefly here at the BIOS of this GMK mini PC. So they do have everything unlocked to us. And that includes my memory timings and things you can have a little fiddle around with if you wanted to tweak things, CPU configuration, you can adjust and change the power limits that is under our power and performance menu. You can change and adjust also the dedicated RAM for the integrated graphics, which is that Iris 655. So you can do that, go in here, and then just tweak that if you wanted to do so under the graphics configuration. So all open to us. I won't go into any detail here. Just be aware that if you mess up any of these settings, it may cause, well, number one, you could overheat the mini PC if you change the power limits too high, run into thermal throttling. And the other thing is it might not even boot. Now you can unplug the battery, but you have to open it up to reset the BIOS.
Okay, so you have to go through your typical Windows setup, which is all boring, and I don't normally ever cover that because who cares, and most of you know about that anyway. It has a few setup languages already pre-installed. If not, you can download the language pack anyway, so not too much of a problem. So this is, of course, powered by that Core i5 that I mentioned. It is the 8259U28 watts is the maximum TDP. And that has a maximum turbo of 3.8 gigahertz. And the graphics is the Iris 655. So that is a step above the 630 or the UHD that we typically get with the integrated graphics on these Intel powered mini PCs and laptops and whatnot. So the storage, we have that NVMe that is in there and these are the maximum speeds you can get out of it. So this surpasses of course SATA 3 speeds it's not too bad, but it, of course, is no Samsung 970 Evo or anything like that. So if you wanted faster, you could upgrade it, of course. Now, free space on Windows, you are looking at 200 and, well, it's gone to 8 now, but it's 209 gigabytes that is free with this one, which is, that's okay, plenty of usable space there. I think most people, that would be right. And, of course, you can add another 2.5-inch drive. So the wireless on this one, that integrated chip that we cannot upgrade, sadly, is wireless AC. It's the 7265. This is a little dated now, considering we're now all on Wi-Fi 6 spec, which is Wi-Fi AC. And I really wish it did have the Intel AX200. So the AX chip is a lot better, a lot faster, Bluetooth 5.1. This has Bluetooth 4.2, I believe it is. Maximum throughput is around about like 700 megabits per second with this card. It's not too bad. And we do have gigabit LAN there. Of course, the CPU shows up our chipset eight times because it has four cores and the eight threads. The version of Windows that it does run is Windows 10 Home. So, of course, you need to run updates, get security patch levels and all that. And installed RAM is only that eight gigabytes. So what I will do now is add some more RAM to get it into dual channel to show you the maximum performance you can expect if you did install another stick of RAM. That brings me then on to some performance figures. But before actually I do start that, I just wanted to point out that video playback with the Iris 655 is flawless. So this is 4K UHD, 60 frames per second, HEVC, not an issue, VP9, not an issue as well. And the Jellyfish file, 140 megabits per second. Bit of a stutter at the start and a few little pauses, but once it gets going after a couple of seconds, it then is very smooth too. That's a very demanding file. I would normally not be playing that kind of high bit rate. Now I won't go into showing you things like documents, spreadsheets, because it's very, very quick. Windows itself, the performance is excellent with this quad core and the eight threads as expected. I mean, everything does feel fast. It certainly runs Windows well and no problems with that. Cinebench R20, the score is okay. Here we can see that it's 1,466, which puts it on power very close to this one here, the Ryzen 7, the 3750H that I've reviewed too in the channel, a couple of those mini PCs. A very, very similar performance there with this. Do remember though, I'm running dual channel, so the score is slightly better because I've installed another stick of RAM. And this will also affect the benchmarks here I'm showing you too, with our graphics score, especially with Night Raid, which is testing out integrated graphics. It's the one that they do recommend for integrated graphics, uh, this particular test here. So not an amazing result. Graphics score, certainly better than the UHD, Intel's UHD integrated graphics. It's a step above that, but really it's not amazing. And the Vega 7 and the Vega 5 and whatnot will actually better this, the AMD integrated graphics. And here is the Geekbench 5 score, which is, it's not bad. I mean, it's it's no slouch. It does feel quick and snappy, but okay, it's only got the four cores, so you can't expect a lot. It's no eight core, 16 thread monster like the last mini pc that i did review with the ryzen 7 4800h in that particular model and to get onto our thermals so unfortunately with the thermals it did hit thermal throttling pushing it very very hard just benchmark after benchmark a little bit of a gaming test too there and that is when we did see the temperatures peak to 85 degrees which triggers thermal throttling so we'll lower the cores down just to get the temperature under control a little and the fan noise not too bad. It's a very minor kind of noise that it makes. It's not super annoying. Uh, under light loads, it's not really that noisy at all. So the fan noise I would rate as definitely better than some of the others that I've tested out in the channel. 
power consumption isn't fantastic under idle. It's around six to eight watts, and I didn't have anything going on in the background. So maybe that could be improved upon, but I have seen better with the Ryzen's, but of course they are seven nanometer chips, those newer ones, and this one isn't. It's the 14 nanometer. Maximum load peaking at 71 watts, and Chrome use just uh, five tabs open, swapping between them. It's anywhere between about 14, 16 watts. So it's, it's not bad. It is a low powered system. It's not going to cost a lot to run it unless of course you're running it just at full tilt the whole time, maximum cores benchmarking or something, then it will be using the 70 watts and yeah, then it's not that efficient then. And onto video editing. So the Core i5, the 8259U here does okay with video edits. Now the playback I have set is just to a quarter here. But if you set that, set it onto full, then it will maybe just be a little bit laggy and slow, but it's not doing bad at all. But again, remember I have both of the sodium slots occupied with RAM. It's running in dual channel and that does help. So that is a basic edit. There's no color grading going on, no fancy transitions, and it'll be all right for that kind of use for 4K video. And now I'll test out the export time. So what I will do is set to one minute of footage. We'll see how long it will take to export this with the standard that I always test, which is the YouTube 4K preset. So that did finish up taking one minute and one second for one minute of 4K footage, which is a very good time for a quad core. Counter-Strike performance, so this is some of my terrible gameplay here. We're getting an average of around 80 frames per second, 1080p low settings. So that is playable. Ideally, I would like to see a lot more, of course. 120 would be much better. Now, if you lower the resolution down, then, of course, you will get a slightly better frame rate. And it looks like we're going to win this one if that bomb doesn't explode, which, no, it's not going to. And we did. Okay, so that's good. So the performance is not bad. Definitely better than the Intel UHD typical integrated graphics. So with GTA 5 here, I do have it set to 720p just to keep the frame rate up and lowest settings. Oh, I didn't even stop. And it's getting, well, it's about 40 frames per second and then down to about 30. So the performance is not ideal, but if you did want to game a little bit on the side, you can clearly see that, yes, it is at least possible and won't be a choppy, super laggy slideshow. And the performance, this is about a good 15 or so frames per second, more than what we would get again with the standard UHD graphics. So yes, about double the performance, but still not as good as what I'm seeing with say the Vega graphics in the AMD Ryzen's. Those many PCs I have reviewed do do better, especially with this game right here. And Linux support, just a very quick note here that it will run it just fine, this mini PC. It's pretty straightforward. So this hardware, just get a new distro. The drivers are all supported. You're going to have no problems because it's just really the laptops that you may have issues with, say, the volume controls, the audio, or the screen brightness control, shortcuts and things like that. But not here. Everything's working great with Linux. All right, and now to my little recap here of the performance of this one. So over the few days that I've been using this, in and out of Windows, your daily task, light computing, very, very good performance. It's fast, it's quick, it's snappy, there's no noticeable lag, you can run a lot of Chrome tabs, documents, spreadsheets, all of that, really, really fine, no problems. I didn't show that in this review because, well, it's a Core i5, it has the four cores, it's got the power, and I think most people will understand that, yes, for that, it's good. The Iris Plus graphics certainly is a lot better than the UHD graphics, the 620 that we normally have with these mini PCs that don't have the Iris Plus and it does have the 28 watt power limit on this one. So it's definitely a step above the performance of say the standard 9th and 10th gen quad cores that don't have the Iris Plus graphics. Now it did run into thermal throttling. It triggers at 85 degrees, which is a little bit lower than some other mini PCs, which may be around 88 degrees Celsius or 89 before it starts to slow down and affect the performance. Fan noise, I think is not bad at all. There's just a little fan on the bottom as I showed you and it does a reasonably good job. So you will hear it come on and off, but it's not offensive, it's not over the top. It's only when you're pushing it really, really hard where you'll notice it a little bit, at least with my unit that I have here. So it can run two displays at 4K 60, which is good. Uh, the Type-C port, I couldn't get any video out, out of that one, sadly. And the micro SD card reader does support USB two speeds there maximum. So it's not an ultra high speed card reader. So all up for the price it sells for, I think it's a little bit of an ask considering the RAM's in single channel. 
we didn't get two sticks, so we're missing out a bit of performance. Now you can open it up, of course, add additional RAM, another stick of eight gigabytes would then bring it up to 16. You get the full dual channel performance then, you can add another 2.5 inch drive, but for the price point, considering the competition, considering that there are other mini PCs that I've reviewed with AMD, the Vega 7 graphics, well, that integrated graphics actually performs a little bit better, and similar kind of performance to this one there, say, if you're looking at the 3000 series, that is. And that's why it's a bit of a hard recommendation for me to say, yeah, go ahead and buy it, unless that price does really come down, I feel, with the Nuke Box 2 right here. So thank you so much for watching this review. I will have more mini PC reviews up and coming, so do stay tuned for those ones.